joined, as always, Keith Sargent, James Cratch. We've got a lot to talk about, fellas, but I, I just wanted to, <laughs> I was thinking about this as we were getting started here today. Can, can you, I mean, how ridiculous this entire fall has been? <laughs> I mean, where this season started, the, the number of strange things that have happened. I mean, it's almost fitting that we're at this point now with a coaching surge where we're just, we're, we're still not quite sure how that's going to go. I mean, it's just been weird, Sarge. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's been weird. Weird probably is a too too light of an adjective. Yeah. Uh, I, I I'm stunned. You know, you go back to like you know September 28th when 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 they made this firing, uh, when 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 Hobbs fired Ash. Yeah, at the time he said that this wasn't going to be done until the end of the season, and you know, two weeks into it, we we you know we kind of got the feeling that this is going to be a Shiano show and maybe Butch Jones, but Butch Jones pulls out, and and you have the, the, everything else that you know they're obviously investigating our report on softball, and you know that you know an independent investigator is, is looking into that now, so you have the you know that looming over, and and it's just you know it's been nonstop. So um, I'm uh, again, I'm not complaining or whatever, but. And neither is Cratch, but you know, neither none of us have had any time off at all. Like not even a day. Like Sunday night, I was on the phone until oh, eleven thirty at night, and then and you know six forty five in the morning on Monday. You know, I, I you know I, I'm I'm on the phone, so it's been brutal for everyone. It's great. And I was trying to think about this. This this will this will crack you guys up, but Cratch, like looking back at like how this season started, and I'm like, they had that grad transfer quarterback from Texas. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell was his name? <laughs> it was like John McClain. No, that's the guy. That's the cat Bruce Willis's character. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, that was like a different. That was like a different world. It felt like I mean, we we were talking about like Arsikowski red shirt. I like. That felt like you know, eons ago. Like, you know, that right. wasn't this season. So many things have happened. I mean, just even think well, about the football I'll, standpoint, you know? I'll do you guys even better. Jonah Jackson, remember when January oh, yeah. when he transferred, it was a huge thing, and we figured it was going to be like this big to-do when the Rutgers played Ohio State. <laughs> Jonah Jackson, like, got to Piscataway, played the football game, basically almost got out of the stadium without anyone realizing he was there. <laughs> No, we completely yeah, forgot. He literally, about like, spoke to talk to the media for three minutes as he was getting on the bus. Oh my gosh! You know, it, it's just it was like who it doesn't really matter at this point. So yeah. uh, it's been exhausting. It has been at least. I tell you that was that was an interesting scene on Saturday. Um, you know, the team played better at least. Good performance, Jonah Jackson. We'll talk about the New York Times story where he was quoted in, which was interesting. But we gotta. I mean, we gotta go with the search, and you know. I mean, We've been saying this for a while. All signs point to Greg Schiano. I just don't understand why, if that's true, and it seems like everything we've heard was that they've 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 ironed out the details and the coach is on board. Sarge, what the hell are we waiting for? I mean, it's just it's just a really weird, you know, weird thing going on. Am I wrong? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean. Um... You know, my sources indicate that, you know, that they've been trying to uh, make sure that before they, they send out this notice of, of, of a board meeting that they actually had had the support for it. And you have to keep in mind, Steve, that, um, you know, the university, uh, you know, votes on a lot of different things. The Board of Governors does. And sometimes, you know, it's not a ru rubber stamp, so to speak. It's not just, you know, the football thing that they, they that they, right. they, they try to hammer out when you're talking about money of this scale. And we're probably talking total package i've heard as much as 12 million uh shiano maybe between four and five million himself and then the assistant pool and you know the support staff and everything else over seven or eight years that you know um we've reported that you know that that uh you know shiano wants more than the typical five so you're talking you know if that's the case let's just say it's eight uh years um you know 12 million per you're talking you know, a huge, you know, 36 to $40 million commitment and of guaranteed. And, you know, when you're talking about money of that scale, you know, you can understand why, why there's a, a debate, you know, at the top level of the oh, university. I when, understand. You know, well, how how they they <laughs> to be honest with you, an athletics department that's already heavily subsidizing the athletic, yeah. you know, the, a university that's already subsidizing the, the, the athletics department, $33 million. You know, eleven million dollars in student fees on an annual basis. Those are real numbers. They're already borrowing against Big Ten money. You have a faculty that has 
has openly criticized. You have students who, who, who are critical. You know, these are not, you know, you know, easy, easy answers. I think ultimately at the end of the day, um, there, there's, there's a feeling that, you know, Greg Ciano is going to solve a lot of issues and you have to get football right and you have to invest. And ultimately, if you, if you, if you ask me what happens, uh, you know, I think that it gets done, but you could understand, Steve, why there's, why, why there's debate and it's not just a, a matter of rubber stamping it. I totally understand why there's debate, and there's, I get that entirely, and that everyone on that board is not some, you know, some crazy, you know, athletics just over everything. I understand completely. I just don't understand how we've gotten to the point that we're negotiating with the football coach if they do not know what can get approved. Like I said, that's when I come back. I mean, is it possible that really they they got the eye, they hammered out a deal or hammered out the parameters of a deal with Greg Schiano without knowing if they have you see what I'm saying, Kratz? Without knowing if they have the votes, I mean, is that I mean, it? Just seems that seems bizarre. I mean, I, look, it's entirely possible at some point they said oh, we got to stop negotiating with Greg and we got to start negotiating to get seven more votes on the board. Right, I think you win eight six. I, this is the way I look at it. You're like. This is some of it's reporting, what we've heard, you know, some of it's just kind of knowing how these things work, you know, educated guessing. I think it's very clear to me, if, if look at the timeline we have for this search. They fire Ash in September, and they say we're going to hopefully wrap this up right after the season ends. And we're going to, you know, all throw in behind Nunzio and the staff and try to be better on the field. And then a the month goes by, and they hire the search firm, and we hear Moorhead's name, and Moorhead then tanks, and the guy at Toledo, you know, so all these names get thrown out that don't excite the fan base or these guys, their teams that they're with currently start to struggle and they kind of get wiped from the list. And then we get to the start of November where they interview Butch and then they interview Greg a couple days later. And from that day forward, the last two weeks, it's basically just been, it's Greg. We got get it done. The long, slow march to getting it done. So the way I look at it is it's pretty clear to me that Rutgers doesn't really have many options beside Greg Schiano. <laughs> Right. So it's some because, you know, if if the search firm did all its back channel dealings and, and told Rutgers, hey, like there is like a 2015 Dan Mullen type name out there that you never would have thought would want in your job. But he wants to talk, but he can't talk until after the last game of the regular season. You kind of be sitting back or you kind of be working that front. But so now I think it's a point of if you're not going to give Greg what he what he wants to come here and by all indications. Greg is not asking for – I mean, he's asking for a tremendous amount, but it's not like he's asking to be paid what Urban Meyer gets paid or Jim Harbaugh got paid. It seems like he wants the investments, the infrastructure, the, the support staff, this everything to get Rutgers what he feels is needed to be competitive in the Big Ten. Right. What other choice do they have at this point? And I, I, I'll, I'll add on to that. You know, people have said – you know, the people who are close to, uh, to Shiano, to Greg, have said, well – you guys are, are reporting this all wrong. This isn't a Shiano demand. This is what what is going to cost. Uh, whether it's the you know the the improvements in the facilities or you know the the, the money that it's going to take to to pay for the coaching staff. This was going to cost anyone who yeah. is going to turn this program around and and make them uh, you know a a a you know a factor in the Big Ten. This is what it's going to cost. <laughs> right. So uh, you know this isn't a Greg Shiano demand. Greg Shiano knows like he just came from Ohio State. Like he knows what it's going to take. He's done it before. He's done rebuilding jobs before. This is what it's going to take. So uh, to Cratch's point, like you know, if if it's not Greg, you know, Bush Jones was going to command you know a similar uh, uh, demand. So let's you know, and if, if it all breaks out, whoever their Plan B, Plan C option is would would, would be foolish not to demand. <laughs> Yeah, the same the same type types of uh, requirements. I have I have not seen one thing that made me go wait. He's crazy. And even eight years, I get people like eight years. But I mean, you're not going to fight. I mean, if they, if they stink the first three years, you're not going to fire Greg Schiano. I mean, you're just not you're not going to bring him back and say you know it's not going to be a Chris Ash thing where you're like, well, do we have the wrong guy? You know, you know the guy can win here. You know he's you know you know you're gonna you're gonna be invested in him. I mean, you know, I think eight years in some ways is. It's good for Rutgers. It just kind of ensures our. I would make the buyout as big as possible to make sure he doesn't, you know, doesn't win here and try to go someplace else. I mean, I know, just, don't, I don't know <laughs> if I would guarantee the eight years. And and um, you know, Chris Ash got a guarantee. They were in a different spot at that point where where they're coming off the NCAA sanctions. And why not? You know, people, people would argue that well, you know, Chris Ash got seven years because you know there there was a thing that yes. we've reported in the contract where you know if they went on NCAA probation that 
he would, you know, he would get two years uh, automatically as a two-year kicker. So he got a seven-year deal essentially. So Greg, you know, uh, you know according to people who, who we've talked to, you know, is asking for eight. Maybe he settles for seven. I don't know, but um, I think more more than anything, I think it's the guarantee of the full the, the full commitment. Because uh, Steve, that's when you're talking. Say it's four point five to start. Say it's four million to start, and then it escalates like you know every every contract does. You're talking. You know, four over over eight. You know, you're talking thirty two million plus another. Yeah, it's like, it escalates probably thirty five million, right? That's mm-hmm. a big commitment if it's fully guaranteed. I I get that. I totally agree. So, how would you structure it then? Because my point again is that you're not. It's not a situation with Chris Ash. We you know, you found out a couple of years in that he can't do the job. I mean, you know that Greg Schiano is you know is going to be. You're, you're not going to give up on him after three years unless you're absolutely complete crazy. So, I mean, what, what do you want to put a buy? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Jordan's contract was, I think, 75%, you know, with, you know okay. a, a, if he got fired after a certain point. I mean, you know, I, I've seen other, you know, uh, coaches' co- contracts that are similar where you're not guaranteed the entire amount. Right. So, right. I think that's, you know, Chris Ash is making over $8 million to walk away. I mean, the, the, yeah. this is real money, Steve. And, oh, and yes. Yeah, again, you're, you're, you're talking about guaranteeing $35 million. Um, it, it's real money. All right, so let's just let's just pretend it, the whole thing blows up, and I can I could just imagine the reaction. There's a meeting, or there's no meeting, or just a cu- a couple of days from now, Greg says, "You know what? You people do not have your you know what together. I'm done." I mean, what crash? What is? I mean, what's your best scenario as to what Plan B is? I mean, I, I've been thinking about it. There's really you got you're you're starting over essentially. Yeah, I mean, I guess they could try to re-engage Butch Jones. Um, I I don't think that's going to happen because, one, you know, Butch pulled out and he had reasons to pull out. And those reasons haven't changed, you know, in the last two weeks. (laughs) And two, I think there's also, you know, I I talked to another coach elsewhere in the Big Ten who said, you know, Butch is, you know, everyone, I Rutgers talks about Jersey, you know, Butch is not New Jersey. He's. You know, Butch is. I don't. He didn't think Butch would be a, would be a terribly dynamic recruiter in New Jersey and New York and Connecticut, which is the areas that Pat Hobbs and everyone at Rutgers has said hey, they have to be. They have to build a wall around. And he also said, and I've heard this too. You know, what's the staff that Butch is going to bring in? You know, I don't. The the vibe I got was that you know all these it, they want to hire. You know, obviously, Greg is big, but the whole promise of Greg has been he's going to bring in this all star staff. Yeah of all the names that the fans know. I don't think any of those guys are coming here to work for Butch no. Jones. So, you know, honestly, if this falls apart, it might just be right place, right time situation. They might have to promote Nunzio. I mean, it, you know, I, Ed Orgeron, you know, I mean, it's a little different because Ed Orgeron had a lot more experience than Nunzio. But, I mean, sometimes, you know, you know, it happens, you know, a guy's in the right place at the right time and it all kind of falls apart. Now, usually it's a guy who has some success. I mean, I always go back, you know, the patron saint, you know, my, you know, Dabo Swinney was just a, a guy in a, t- in a gray sweatshirt with a funny name and they beat South Carolina in the rivalry game and they carried him off the field and they suddenly said, okay, let's give this guy the job because we're not really getting the big fish anyway. And now he is the big fish. So uh, you, you never know. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I said, like, but they could go get a guy like Lance Leipold at Buffalo, but people are not going to, I just think if you lose Greg, the fan base is going to be in meltdown mode. And the only person that they might at least give a chance to might be Nunzio at the end. No, of the day. I understand what you're saying about Dabo and, I'm, and Ryan Day is another example, a guy who's an assistant who comes in and, and does a great job. It's just a different situation at Ohio State. In front I of totally agree. I mean, Sarge, do you think that's, I mean, is there, an, you know, I've heard Anthony's name as well, but he's, yeah, I mean, I'll he's give you younger name. than Nunzio. I, I, with less experience. I, I, exactly. But, you know, you clearly, I mean, look, pa- Pat Hobbs came out of the press conference the other day and came, you know, not that he talked to us, but you could just tell he was <laughs> kind of giddy over, over the, the 56, over the, the, the effort of the team. I'm not, I'm not making and I like uh, other people can, can can joke about it, but like they they did uh, have a really good effort in 21 points, you know, you know against Ohio State. It's nothing to sneeze at, I guess. But you know, they were never there was not one moment in that game where it was competitive. But I think uh, Pat Hobbs, uh, you know, clearly likes Nunzio and you know likes the direction that it likes the way he's represented the program. So if it's not Nunzio, like Cratch su- suggested. Why not bring Anthony Campanelli, his brother, his brother who who all along we've kind of said, well, you know, he just seems like he's a little bit ahead of 
you know, Nunzio in the pecking order. He's been, you know, a college assistant longer. He was a defensive coordinator at Boston College, had some success. Now he's at Michigan. Um, you know, why not, why not Anthony Campanelli have him as a, as a team? You know, Nunzio stays on staff. So you have the offense, you know, you know, intact and, you know, let them, you know, recruit New Jersey. You know, that's one option. <laughs> the other option, and I think you might have mentioned it maybe a month ago, but Jeff Halfley, I think, is going to be a, a, a star. He's going to be a head coach so, some someday. I get that the, there's a perception that, oh, my God, you're hiring. You, you know, you just fired the uh, former defensive coordinator at Ohio State who, who, who you know, failed. Now you're going to hire the, the, the defensive coordinator at Ohio State. Jeff Halfley is different. He's a Jersey guy. You know, he, you know, he had recruited at Rutgers and had a ton of success in the past. There are people who, who, who are you know, within the coaching fraternity who think that guy's going to be a rock star. Um, I, I, I would say you know, one of those two guys that would be at least worth a phone call if this breaks no, down. i got to look at this really quick so before you go on, on Anthony. All right, look, I'm looking at his resume right now. You got, he's never been a head coach anywhere. I mean, he was OC at Don Bosco, the Rutgers defensive assistant when they let him go after when the flood purge. Boston College, DB coach. I mean, it, it, he was a defensive coordinator for one year at Boston. Uh, his resume is thinner than Nunzio's. And I get it. When you're going from a guy who, in, in Shiano, who was an 11-year college head coach, who went coach, he failed, he failed, yeah, but two years in the NFL, I mean, that is an enormous drop-off. That is a leap of faith bigger than Chris Ash's leap of faith. Uh, that's, you know. I, I was just going to say, and I just want to press this by saying, this name has not been mentioned once by a single person. Oh, I look forward you know, to it. This is good. Okay. <laughs> Al Golden. No, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the, case, the truth is whether he was the 19th choice, Al Golden, I, everyone I talked to said Al Golden would come here, and a lot of people think Al Golden would give you 89% of what Shiano would give you. He's a guy who the high school coaches love, like, admire and respect. He's a guy who, who could unite North Jersey and South Jersey. You know, he's a guy who I know he's with the Lions, but they're three seven and one, and their defense is like a, a historic disgrace. You know, for the franchise, so I'm sure he could get cut loose. Right. You know, if he if he wanted to. Right. But I mean, I, he's a guy who no one has mentioned. I, I know he interviewed back when they hired Ash, but he's a guy who I think, sort of like when Frank Wright took the Colts job. Not to compare, it's kind of two different things. But after McDaniel was pulled out. He's a guy who at least is going to calm everybody down, and he's going to win people over quickly, I think. All right. But I don't see him being on the radar. I'm going to get your opinion on this right now in true or false. We're going to go right to it. You're going to have to tell me where you feel about it. All right. True or false? If the Shiano deal fall, falls through, they should just give it to Nunzio. Cratch, true or false? True. Sarge? False. If the Shiano deal falls through, they should open the search and look at guys like Lance Leopold. Cratch, true or false? Well, I'll say false. Okay, Sarge. Like you said like, not not uh, necessarily land. Yeah, uh, land. yeah, not anybody. Particular. Yeah, reopen the search. Yeah, reopen. for true. Okay, true. if the channel deal falls through, they should tear down the stadium and just set fire to the ground in, in a blaze <laughs> until everything, until the soil itself is gone and cleansed of the whole thing. True or false, Crash? What do you think? I, I'm going to go true on this one, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, true. I mean, if they, if it, well, that was this. If it falls through, I, I don't know how they can stand up at a press conference. <laughs> so, it would be really hard to stand up at a press conference and say, like, we, we still want to go to the road. So, <laughs> the, 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 that's right. The one thing is, I would, I'm, like, have you ever smelt the burnt, uh, burnt rubber? I mean, that's what, yeah, that's that's good, right? I don't want to, yeah, yeah, that's bad for the environment. Far enough away that it wouldn't bother me, that's fine. All right. But, yeah. <laughs> true or false, if Shano is the guy, Nunzio should be the offensive coordinator next season. Cratch, true or false? I will say false, just because the offense yeah. uh, hasn't done a whole heck of a lot. I think he's definitely on staff. Maybe he's just a head coach, but I would think Greg is going to want to hire a more experienced coordinator. Cratch? I'm sorry, Sarge? I'm going to say true, and here's why. Because um, I know this kind of yeah, the rule was just to say true, and we'll expand on it, but I will, I'll break that rule. Um, I'm going to say true. Uh, because Shiano A wants to to have a uh, a spread. I think we've talked to enough people who who with insight that that can confirm that that yeah. Shiano wants to have some sort of spread offense. And B, you still have the uh, ten offensive play callers in in ten years uh, dilemma. You need consistency with the offense. If that's what he's going to run anyway, now you have at least had you know three quarters of a season with Nunzio implementing this spread. Right. If you, that's what you're going to do, then. That's you know I I I would I think that uh, Nunzio 
you just need some consistency with the offense. Yeah, the other part about it, you would have you would have co-offensive coordinators. I think that, that was the same model that Ohio State's using, so you could have two guys. Uh, true or false, Johnny Langan is proving he'll be the quarterback in 2019. Cratch? 20, you mean. 20, 20 I'm sorry, false. 20. Yeah, I get my dates right. Uh, Sarge? Uh, false. <clears throat> All right, true or false, Michigan State is going to fire Mark D'Antonio. Cratch, true or false? Uh, true. Okay. Uh, fire is too strong of a word. I think they'll, they'll yeah, try to uh, work on it. You know, some sort of you know amicable. You know, where he's probably uh, you know retiring or stepping down or whatever. But I don't think he'll be the coach next. That's season. crazy. All right. True or false? Uh, Korzak should not be team MVP because he's going to be Australian Prime Minister. True or false? Crap. <laughs> False. <laughs> I mean, could he could he be the Australian oh, David Hasselhoff? Was it wasn't Hasselhoff like hugely was Australian? popular in Australia? I guess I think he's proper in Germany. Oh, that, no, that's like that's like Germany. Germany yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Germany, 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 <laughs> All right. And true or false, fans should be very concerned about the state of the basketball team. Cratch, true or false? <laughs> true. All right. Sarge? False. Right. I think that uh, they'll be able to right the ship and play better, you know, as the season goes along. Yeah, I tell you, that, that loss to St. Bonaventure was not good. And it's just like the, it's like the perfect everyone. All right. Hey, look, the football team didn't get their asses kicked that badly. All right. Yeah, but, uh, basketball. <laughs> You know, it's just that bad. I mean, we, it's just the typical kind of like want, want. Um, yeah, I mean, that was that's tough though. I, I, I have a couple efforts like that where you just wonder if that's going to take, if this, you know, is going to take longer to, to put together than you think. I mean, what do you think, Cratch? Am I overreacting to that? I don't know. It's. I just thought the uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It's it's tough to say. I mean, you don't want to overreact, but you don't want to underreact. Right. right. Uh, anything else we need to talk about there on that list? I mean, uh, we kind of we kind of touched on everything. I, you know, I, it's it, we spend a lot of time on what will happen if this falls apart, and there's really no look. There's no indication that it's going it's going to fall apart. Really, I mean, we're just surprised it hasn't happened yet. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, you know, maybe. Maybe Sarge will get a phone call in the middle of this podcast and we can all move on. But it's just, yeah, it's just weird. It's just, that's the only way I can describe it. Weird. All right. You want to dive into some podcast questions? I haven't I haven't pre-read them. We just put it out late. Again, if you subscribe to uh, uh, nj.com backslash text, our Rutgers Insider, every week we ask you guys to give us questions. It's been a fun time on the Rutgers Insider because people are really getting a glimpse into what life is like during a coaching search for, for the rest of us. Uh, here's the first question. Does Shiano get hired? I'm kidding. Why is this taking so long? Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun questions here. Uh, uh, would they, here's one. Would they even call a meeting if they didn't have a vote, have the votes? Uh, Sarge, that would seem crazy. What do you think? No, they will not. I, I don't, I, I think once they call the meeting, they have the votes. Right. Uh, they're, they're not a, a uh, you know, there's, there's, it's not a circus. They're, 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 it might be close, but you know, I, I, I also will say this: that if they had the votes, then it more than likely would be unanimous. Okay. So yeah. Well, that would we'll, be we'll never. Yeah. They'll, they'll say they'll, they'll come out saying, "Oh no, this was unanimous yeah. support," because that's just the way stuff happens. That, that's the next question, Kratz. I was going to say: Does Engelson Brown want unanimous unanimous approval for Greg, or would they be satisfied with eight with eight and move on to the presser? I, my whole thing is: if there's eight. Then wouldn't everyone else just kind of like, for the most part, cast their lot in? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, is is it like Washington where it's so like polarized? Right. I mean, I, I I'm sure like you might have like one or two nay votes, but I would think you know it would be kind of. I, I mean, I, I'm not. This is my first time I've really going up to the limit with a BOG situation yeah. on this beat, but I would think that you know if 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 it's gonna win, you know, most people probably want to cast in just because and I know these, you know, I'm not, I'm not elected officials, but the people who vote no, you know, there's some idiots who are going to, you know, say, send them nasty emails. <laughs> so people might want to avoid that. Uh, here's one that's good. I mean, what percentage do you think that the BOG actually gets this right and approves at this point? Um, Sarge, you want to put a number on it? Oh, God. Percentage? Yeah, give me a percentage. Come on. That's like car sharks. Again, I talk about this all the time. We can go higher, I know. higher than that. Oh. What do you think? Uh, I'll go 75%. 75%. Cratch, higher or lower than 75%? I'll go 70%. Oh, 70. oh gosh. I'm God. Go, that's close. I'm going to go higher. I think, it, I think it's got to be. It's, it's just got to get done. Uh, this is a good one from, uh, from where did I lost it here. Uh, from Sean. Okay. 
If he's got his agreement on facilities, that's good. Beyond that, once he's in the chair, what should his first couple of major priorities be? Cratch, you want to take that one? What does he have to do in the first, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 50 days? I think step one, he's got to sit down with Sikowski yep. and Blackshear and figure out if he can re-recruit them, keep them on the team. Mm -hmm. I think two, he's got to improve this recruiting class. Yep. And I don't know if that means running guys off, you know, flipping guys. He, I mean, they, they can't have a recruiting class rank low. Yep. They'll have one month for that. It's just yep. not acceptable. Yep. You know, I think the fact that they haven't lost a single commit <laughs> since the coaching yep. change, yep. you know, yes, give a little credit to Nunzi on the staff, but also – because show you that a lot of these guys Chris Ash had committed don't really have any better options than Rutgers. Yep. You know, guys are not going to decommit from a Big Ten school to go to Elon. Mm -hmm. uh, third thing, I think he's he's got to. I think you mentioned this. He's got to be out there in the community. You know, going to things, being seen. You know, ex pumping up the fan base. I mean, they're not. They haven't won a lot of games this year, and, and they're probably not going to win a lot of games last next year. But there needs to be some sort of excitement in, in the absence of victories. And I think Greg has to, you know, he has to kind of shock the fan base back into believing right, again. Right. And I think he's got to, he's got to be at basketball games talking at halftime. He's got to be kissing babies. Now they, they should, you know, now that they do have the records club and they, they can call a radio show with a coach on like an hour, a day's notice, you know, they should have Greg Shiano shows, you know, they, if they get it done this week, Greg's got to be out visible at the stadium. Yeah. You know, I don't know, sit, sit him in the front of the Audi club so people can see him. I just think he's got to be out there and he's got to signal that he's back. And then it might take a while, but but Rutgers is going to come back and they're going to come back together. <clears throat> there's so many funny, there's so many funny comments this week, guys. You guys outdid yourselves on, on the text back to us. One one was that if he gets this job, they should just land a helicopter on the field and have Shannon jump out. Another one said they, they should think they should have him ride in on the horse during pregame and video and remove the helmet. <laughs> I could just say that. That would be awesome. Uh, everyone wants uh, LeGrand to introduce him in the, during halftime of the game. I don't know if any of that's going to happen, guys. This is, uh, you know, I mean, they couldn't even, Rutgers couldn't even introduce the players from the 2000s at halftime. I can't, can't imagine they could pull something off like this. Um, all right, what else do we got? Uh, uh, if, here we go. If Seattle comes back, how long until his next Louisville moment? And will it happen again? I guess by Louisville moment, obviously, you got a team that's in the top 25 playing on national TV. It pulls a big upset. Um, sorry, do you want to take that? How long is it going to take to get to that point? I think it'll happen next year. And here's really? why. And I think wow. um, by, by all accounts, talking to people about the, the November 5th meeting between uh, Shiano and, and Pat Hobbs and Greg Brown, uh, Shiano is, is, is going to recruit his butt off. And I think he's going to, more than anything, Hit that transfer portal. I think I, I think he's going to to try to try, try to get guys who, who can immediately help. And um, when you're talking about it, the Louisville moment, maybe, maybe I, I, I'm I'm going too strong because Louisville moment is when the team is nine and zero and they upset you know you know and, and play on the national stage. That might take you know three or four years. But as far as an upset, I, I think they're winning big a Big Ten game next season if, if Graciana's there. I think that you know they could easily be a you know, a, a, you know, a second tier um, type, you know, middle of the pack type team, um, you know, in the Big Ten. Um, you know, I think it'll happen next year. It's fun. Go ahead, you know, Chris. Go ahead. Saturday, November 6, 2021, uh, second year for Shiano. They beat Wisconsin in Piscataway. That'll be the, wow. the moment. Okay, you guys are much, much more optimistic. And then, then the next question, I, and I, again, I wrote, you saw what I wrote after the game on, I just think that the talent, someone wanted to know, is I think the cupboard, 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 I say cupboard, 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 cupboard. cupboard. Okay, I'm for you. Yeah. All right. Isn't completely empty. What's your thoughts? And I, I mean, I've, I've gone through this a bunch and I had like a Twitter fight, not Twitter fight, but a Twitter back and forth with one of my favorite uh, Twitter followers, Dan, about, um, just what, you know, how many people, how long is it going to take? And I, I, I really do think that if you look at where this talent was in this program, it's now obvious to me that there were more players in this program when Chris Ash took over than there are now. Do you disagree? And do you think that you think that it isn't empty? Do you agree with the statement that really there, there are some players there that can make this a little easier than, than perhaps outsiders might think? Whoever wants to take it, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Crash. I think there are some players here, I, I, but my biggest concern is the offensive and defensive yeah. lines. Yeah. 
And and the thing about the offensive line is, and, and it kind of popped in my head, if Jonah hadn't went to Ohio State and he had stayed here for Rutgers, I was he'd be starting. Four of the five starting offensive linemen would have been uh, no, excuse, yeah. I mean, you, three or five, it was basically all flood guys still. Yeah, you know, Seymour, Vineski, Crimin were all initially flood commits, and and Jonah was a flood commit. So that's the that's the issue is that even the offensive line has struggled this year and they're still relying on guys that Chris didn't even recruit. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. So you know, it's just like that's my big thing is I feel like next year might be the year where they don't really have they kind of have a major offensive line issue just because you know Reggie Sutton and Raekwon O'Neal that they they both have problems but they've both been injured a lot this year, kind of in and out of the lineup. You've got my Eddie back, you, you, you know, CJ Hansen, you know, maybe he's, you know, it's that thing. That's going to be the biggest issue I think facing Greg next year is that they might be a year where the offensive line situation completely bottoms out. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to get two. Rutgers couldn't get one of those guys out of the transfer portal this past off season. Now you're going to ask Greg to get two or three of them. So I think that's, that's the big issue for me is that I think the offensive line might hit the hit rock bottom next year in terms of depth. And then Greg is going to have to steadily build it up, or whoever the next coach. Is. All right. So we mentioned Jonah Jackson is a good good as time any to just talk about the New York Times story, which, um, uh, as always, my joke and I didn't make it on Twitter this year was New York newspaper dis- discovers New Jersey college football team. The annual story from New York Times on it uh, was was really uh, littered with errors. We will get into we won't get into those. But the one thing I the one thing that was amazing was the anecdote they have that Jonah Jackson is taking a photo with. Um, you know, with the form, with the, with his former teammates, and one of the team, one of the one of the guys from Rutgers says to him, "I'm so happy you got out." Um, I mean, what do you make of that, Sarge? Were you were you surprised to see that, or is is that you know? I mean, it, it kind of kind of amazing. Well, I I do know that they were very very close to uh, Jonah, uh, yeah. a few of the offensive linemen. We talked to him in Chicago about it, and you know, none none of the players who 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 were there wanted to throw Jonah under the bus. I think. When and we learned it with 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 the uh, Raheem Blackshear uh, decision when when right. you know when Nunzio came out like you know and was very critical of it the fan base was very critical of it and you know, the players on the team for the most part everyone who was quoted they stood up up, up in front of a microphone and said they understood stood it so you know I think you know from a player standpoint I think you know they 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 understand that you know these are, are decisions that aren't easy and that they're personal and you know so they respect it I think. You know, they're, they're, they're friends. I, you know, at the end of the day, I think that, that, that they, you know, they had a bond for you know, the three or four years that, that Jonah was here. And I don't think, you know, you just, uh, you know, uh, you know, that that goes away when 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 he makes a decision to go to the number two team in the, uh, in the country. So, right. I can understand it. And the final podcast comment, you guys should wait until the announcement. Otherwise, you'll be outdated and re-recording. Well, too late now. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you for the questions, as always. All right. Let's jump into what do we got next? Oh, predictions. And this is going to be fun because Cratchit is going to pick Rutgers. He said so. He wrote it. He put it, he it in the video. He is all in. He's going to pick Rutgers to beat Michigan State. I'm so excited to hear what he's thinking. Go ahead, Cratch. Why are you going to pick Rutgers to win this game? Because Michigan State has lost five straight. They have scored 10 points or fewer in four of those losses. As we mentioned earlier, D'Antonio appears to be on the way out. And the bottom line is they're four and six. They've gotten, they've been horrible. And everyone's like, oh, they're playing for a bowl game. And yes, they play Rutgers. They play Maryland. They could easily get to six and six. Do those kids really want to go to the quick lane bowl the day after Christmas? Or, or God forbid, like the first responder bowl and the decrepit cotton bowl or something. Yeah. No. Do they really have anything to play for? I just think this is an opportunity. If Rutgers comes out with the effort they showed against Ohio State and they don't turn the ball over twice in the first four plays, there's a chance that Michigan State just might say, you know what? We don't want this. Oh, no. So, yeah, I, I'm, and they're offensively challenged to begin with. They've, they've been hit hard by transfer portal injury. You know, their best player, the linebacker, Joe Baki, suspended for the rest of the season for taking an uh, illegal substance inadvertently. So I'm going to say Rutgers 16, Michigan State wow. 14. Okay. A lot of field goals there or something happened. Well, all right, uh, Sarge, you agree? 
I mean, Crash does know that uh, the late uh, J- James Gandolfini won't be coming down. And this, this is in 2004, right, Crash, where, where Rutgers, you know, yeah. be, uh, upset Michigan State that, you know, that you, you do know that, right? Um, but I, I respect it. Um, and I will say that I do think it will be close. I mean, last year's game was, was, was um, you know, uh, very close as well. Rutgers had, had a very good chance to win that game. Um, I'm going to go low scoring, probably – 24 20 Michigan State win Michigan State <laughs> I've got a funny story I got, I got to tell this one really quick before I get my prediction about the 2004 game because Shiano told it at the Hall of Fame induction uh, for Jerry Eisenberg and he's telling the story about how they beat they win that game and they're feeling great it was on you know national TV it beat Michigan State everyone's so excited and the next week and I forgot this but the next week they went out and they you know they crapped the bed against New Hampshire New Hampshire yeah, yeah. and so Hell Jerry yeah. so Jerry is in the press conference and you know he, he, he thinks he goes up to Greg. <laughs> he goes up to Greg after the press conference, and Greg says he's thinking that you know this old this, this sage columnist from New Jersey put, is going to put his arm around him and offer some words of encouragement. And instead, Jerry says, "I'm going to have to kill you tomorrow. Don't pick up the paper." <laughs> I just love that story. I could just see him doing it anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be as close as you guys do. I just don't see that defense stopping a, a even a even a bad the Big Ten offense at this point. So I'm gonna go 31-14 victory for the Spartans. All right, what else have we got? Anything? Anything else? Cratch? What else is going on? Women's soccer team did not do well. Uh, that was that was that last week. I, things were starting to blend together. Yes, they they, they were upset by Central Connecticut State. Why does that keep happening home, so. to this team? I mean, come on, what what's the deal? Or am I making that up? Has that not happened before? <laughs> no, I mean they they had two kind of gut punch yeah. losses end the year. Obviously, the semifinals of the Big Ten, and then you know, kind of similar. You know, late 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 in the game, you know, give up a goal. They they were banged up. They they, they had suffered a bunch of injuries against. Uh, Michigan, I think, you know, the injuries carried over to this game. But, you know, look, they're the most consistent, you know, program, I think, in many ways at the university. Uh, they just can't kind of get over that hump yet. So they're, you know, they're waiting for I that. I will say on, on, on a bigger uh, point, it's year six in the Big Ten, and this was kind of perceived to be, like, the, the best chance to, to win a Big Ten title, which, they, you know, no, no program has won a, either a regular season standings or, or a uh, championship um, um uh, Big Ten championship, uh, you know, since they entered, I, I do think that from that standpoint, that maybe men's lacrosse does it this spring, but I, I think that's probably uh, the, a bigger disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, wrestling, women's, women's basketball, basketball okay. four and scoring a lot of points. I mean, they haven't the, the schedule's about to get tougher. Um, you know, they they you know, and Vivian obviously just landed the number six recruit in the <laughs> country. Amazing. For 2020, they they recruited she's very well. She's so. just amazing. What? And she she she, she would disappeared for half the year, and she can still. I mean, she can still land the. She can still land the number six recruit in the country. Wow, that's. A- you know, I, I've heard from people like kind of around the program that like she, you know, she's it's it's evident you know that what her time off did her well. She's she's got you know fire and energy and all over the place. So you know, it wouldn't shock me. Maybe not this year, but it wouldn't shock me if they are now maybe. In the in the leader's spot to be the, the first Big Ten champion for wow, Rutgers. Good stuff. All right, and basketball team's back on the court this week against Stephen F. Alston, and then Steve, so then cool. it gets Stephen rough. Austin, then it gets rough, yes. right? I yeah. I mean, obviously, we're, we're hurtling towards that seat. Michigan State, Michigan State, and Big Ten winner and Pitt. So um, Wisconsin too. So I think I think this is a big game for them on Wednesday. I think if they if they lose, God forbid, or or if they win and kind of let Stephen F. Austin kind of hang around, you know, until the end. I think the, I know Steve Pyle keeps on telling fans to enjoy the journey, <laughs> but there's been a lot of potholes in that journey so far. They barely have Good a luck. <laughs> Good luck with um, that, Steve. Uh, uh, all right, let's yeah. sign off there. This has been a fun podcast. Next week's, I promise, is either going to be uh, epic in one direction or the other. Steve Politi, James Cratch, Keith Sargent signing off. Thanks for listening as always, guys. We'll see you next week.